This is the Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, on Alternative Talk, AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here on 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, July 25th show. My goal is to keep you up to date on the latest news and trends in our local economy. Keep me tuned in and I will keep you informed. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at 1-855-411-50. Again, that's one 855 Four hundred eleven fifty, or online at themoneyhour.com to discuss anything regarding money or talk to the guests that I have in studio. And actually on the phone today, because Larry is a little ways away from uh, Seattle, Larry Goins, Goins with Goins Group and how to get a huge discount on HUD properties. Larry, thank you so much for uh, joining me back uh, in studio or on the phone to talk about the amazing things that you're doing to help people take advantage of the real estate market. You're very welcome. It's my pleasure. And I was I love Larry's accent too. I just had to I had to shout that out there, Larry. <laughs> How y'all doing? <laughs> <laughs> Little background about Larry. Larry's an active real estate investor, author and coach, and travels the US speaking and training audiences and conventions, expos on real estate investment associations on strategies for buying and selling ten to twenty properties per month without having to leave their home. Larry has written two books that can be found on in the bookstore. Uh, everywhere getting started in real estate day trading and hud homes half off between speaking engagements and mentoring investors he oversees the daily operations of investors rehab Incorporate, which is a real estate investment company that buys and sells 10 to 20 properties per month. As a husband, father, businessman, and real estate investor, Larry holds true to his core values and moral integrity. And his personal and business motto is people and principles before profits. So Larry, let's go ahead and start out uh, because you do something that's uh, really unique and that is purchasing HUD homes. So can you tell my listeners first a little bit about um, about yourself and your business? Sure, absolutely. I'll be glad to. I live in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. It's a small lake community right across the state line from Charlotte, North Carolina. And we have a little business here where we buy and sell 5, 10, 20 houses a month. And uh, we wholesale a lot of them, meaning we, we get them at a, dis, a deep discount, and then we add about ten or 12000 to it and sell it to another investor that's going to fix and flip the property, or maybe even someone who wants to be a homeowner, but they have cash to pay for the property, but they want a good deal, even though it may need a little bit of work. Yep. And uh, we, we do a few fix and flips, not many, but we also sell or finance some properties as well, where we will... Uh, buy it at a deep discount, and then we'll turn around and sell it to someone who wants to become a homeowner but maybe cannot qualify for a mortgage, and they put a few thousand dollars down, and we finance it for them. Nice. Now, just like anything else that we do in life, um, we fail and we succeed. And the key is if you fail and you don't do it right the first time, don't quit and go back, especially if it's something passionate that you're passionate about. And I know that you've tried our real estate a couple of times. And what made it different for you in being successful in this arena? Well, I had tried real estate many times and a lot of people getting into real estate investing you know, they're trying to work a full-time job and they're mm-hmm. trying to do real estate nights and weekends. And, you know, and, and it's tough. And the most, the, the main reason people want to get into real estate investing is so they can get out of their daytime job, a, a lot of people anyway. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and, and I've tried real estate several times. And the problem is real estate ends up being a second job. Well, you didn't want the first one. Now you have two. And, and, and it's, a, it's, a, you know. it's a full-time plus second job. Absolutely. And, and you know, and really, it's a commission-only job because yes. if you don't do a deal, make any money. You, you know, if you don't do a deal, you don't make any money. And you're not just so, you're not just even. You're actually behind because there's the cost of being a realtor. That's absolutely. If you're a realtor, you know absolutely. But you know, if you're even buying and selling houses for yourself, even mm-hmm. though you don't have to be licensed, that you're not a realtor, it's still commission in the sense that. You know, if you buy it for thirty thousand and sell it for forty thousand, yep. or you know, if you're if you're on the West Coast, you buy it for three hundred thousand and sell it for three fifty. <laughs> you know, 
Um, it's still you only get paid if the deal closes. Yeah, you know? exactly. So it's it can be very tough. And I had tried real estate several times. And when I started learning to use technology and systems and processes and procedures, you know, it really kind of led me to HUD. And that's what I love about HUD is it's all done online. Mm-hmm. All of the properties you submit your bid online, and they're submitted even by a, an agent. Um, for you, yeah, which makes it even better. Yep, and so um, uh, for my listeners out there, your HUD property, they're properties that have been foreclosed on homeowners that had an FHA loan. So FHA is coming in or HUD's coming in and foreclosing on these mm-hmm. homes and then they're going to put them back on the market. And so let's talk about the technology uh, piece of this because I think some people still are a little bit uh, a little bit nervous about technology and, and surely maybe uh, going through the buying process of a, an investment property on through using technology technology. Can you talk about that? Yeah, people are scared of technology. And, you know, the cool thing about HUD houses is you go to you go to HUD's website, HUDHomestore.com. And and that's where all the properties are. Now, if you're an investor, you only want to search for investor property. Mm -hmm. So there's a little box there. You click on that, you know, the type of buyer. Well, I'm an investor. Then it's going to only pull up properties that are available to investors. Because the thing about HUD is, they only make their properties available to people who are going to buy them to live in them or owner occupants for the first 15 to 30 days, depending yep. on where, where the property is. Got it. So after that, it's open up as an investor. Then you just go through there and search the properties. They have what's called a PCR right there. That's a property condition report where an inspector has gone out and looked at the property and will give you an idea of all the type of repairs that it needs. Now, not the small repairs like paint and carpet, but things like wiring and plumbing and HVAC, heating and air conditioning, that sort of thing. Sure. So it really does help you with that. And, and you haven't had to buy a single piece of software or, or any kind of a system or anything like that. It's all right there and it's done yep. for you. So we've got some tips I want to go over with my listeners. Um, if you guys are listening, grab a pen. If not, you can go back online and listen to the podcast. But we got to get through these quickly because there's nine of them. And I just want to break them down. Let's talk about your step one is analyze. How do you analyze if it's a good deal or not? Well, if I'm going to wholesale the property, I have to leave enough room in it for my buyer to make money. So I take the ARV or after repaired value. I multiply that times 0.7 or 70%, Mm -hmm. and then I subtract out any cost like repairs and how much I want to make, and right there's the number that I can pay for it. So all I do is enter in that property bid Mm -hmm. right there for that number, and it's as simple as that. So what about step two? We're talking about location. So how do you find deals online that fit within the criteria of location? Awesome. Well, HUD is a very big source of properties, but there's also REOs, which stands for real estate-owned, bank-owned properties. Mm -hmm. There's Craigslist. There's eBay. You can do direct mail to absentee owners. You can pull up lists at different list sources and send them a postcard for people who own a property, but they don't live in that property, and send them direct mail. And just many, many different things. Networking at your local real estate investors association Mm. is another great way. Yeah, that's awesome. And your step three is is negotiate. So why is it important and how do you do it that's that's different? Well, negotiating Mm -hmm. is a very big part of being a good real estate investor, especially when you're having to talk with realtors and for sale by owners. With HUD, that's not the case because it's all done online. Yep. But when you're talking with a realtor, you want to get that realtor to like you and trust you. And even though you're making a low offer, you want to get your offer out there to where it leaves the door open for them to call you back or you to call them back, whether it's a realtor or an individual. See, so many people get their offer out there and they just, they just say, well, based on what you're telling me, your house is not worth but 50000 I know mm-hmm. you're asking 120 but it's not worth the fifty. There's a much better way you can say it. You know, sure. as an investor, I'm sure you can understand I got to make a profit, you know, and the advantage of working with me is you can sell your house in its as is condition, you know, and you don't have to sign a six month or 12 month listing agreement, mm-hmm. and I can close next Friday. And based on what you're telling me, it looks like I need to be around in the low to mid 50s, somewhere around there. Is that something you think you might be able to work with? Mm-hmm. Now, see, that sounds much better than your house is not worth but 50 
will you take it? Exactly. And again, in our market, we're, we're changing the numbers a little bit. Might be talking about 300, 400,000, but exactly. <laughs> let's move over exactly. to step, uh, move on to step four. So we talk about the contract. So how do you structure your contracts, uh, Larry? Well, the key is to be able to line your money up in advance. If you don't have any money, find private investors, hard money lenders, cash partners, credit partners, be able to structure your deal so you have your money lined up so you can make cash offers. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the key to put in your contract, that it's a cash offer. The second thing is make sure you get a 15-day inspection period. So you can go have a contractor go out or you could go out and look at it yourself or have a home inspector or do a CMA or whatever, comparative market analysis, whatever it is you want to do. So that way you can back out and get your deposit back if you need to. So those are two things that you need in your contract. So let's go to step five, which is the in inspection. Um, wh how do you ins handle the inspections when you're, you know, by uh, not going out to the property? Well, that's a really good question. I have actually done deals in 11 different states, right from my office in Lake Wiley, South Carolina. Uh -huh. And we, we either have a contractor go out, we could find a contractor on, uh, on Craigslist, we, uh, we also have local temp agencies will send people out to take pictures of the houses. There's also what's called property preservation companies that work for the banks and the asset managers. Mm -hmm. And they travel all over and they'll go out and go into the house, take pictures and make a list of any repairs that are needed. And those are just a very few of the ways that are actually in my book that I show you how to uh, inspect the property. Got it. Okay, moving on to next, uh, your next step, next step being six, and that is do your due, dil due diligence. And I know you do things a little bit differently here. Can you explain that? Well, we do. We want to make sure that we can sell that property as fast as we're buying it. And the thing that we're looking for is we want to talk to a realtor or two and see what the after repaired value is of that property. We want to either send out a contractor or a home inspector to get an estimate on the property to see for sure what it's going to cost to fix it up. And sometimes we get an ARV or after repaired value appraisal. But mm -hmm. we want to just make sure that we know we can sell that property. In order, to, in order to sell it fast, we've got to provide enough information for our potential buyer so they are ready to make a decision fast. Got it. What Lesson. we basically do is we buy it and sell it the same day. So, Larry, so that brings us right into step seven. You talked about selling the property, and I know some of these properties you're selling in, you know, two hours. How do you do that? The key is to have a ready, willing, and able buyers list ready to buy properties, and then we just send out an email. They start fighting over our deals. Awesome. Step eight, automation. How do you set up the computers to be automated with your, your business and your clients? Well, we like to use things like uh, DocuSign, where people can sign documents online. Mm -hmm. We use databases and autoresponders and try to keep things as simple as possible just so we can automate our business, use text blasting to market our properties, and, and just little simple tools like that. So, Larry, to wrap things up, I said there's nine tips. Go ahead and tell my listener the ninth tip. The ninth tip is to duplicate. That's where you bring other people in to help you where you can have employees, partners, a spouse, teenagers. You can even hire virtual assistants for a couple dollars an hour to help you in your business. Awesome. Larry, thank you so much. And I know that uh, for my listeners right here on the Money Hour, 1150 AMKK on Jibview, you are giving a gift. So I want you to let my listeners know what that is and how they can take advantage of it. Absolutely. You can get a free copy of my latest book, HUD Homes Half Off. It's available in bookstores. But if you go to freehudbook.com, you can get a free version, absolutely free, instead of buying it in the bookstore. Larry, thank you so much. It's a pleasure to uh, have a conversation again uh, with you in regards to uh, the great things that you're doing and helping people secure uh, properties and taking advantage of opportunities through HUD. So thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's okay. been great. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye, Larry. Thank you. Bye-bye. And this is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for the day. Thank you to all my listeners for being here with me, listening to the show. And I'll be back same time, same place next Saturday, right here on 1150 AM KKNW.